Oh, baby. There you go. When I'm not recording episodes, this is where the cats come for treats. <laughs> Hi. So on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at one of the unsung heroes of publishing and good works here in North America, uh, St. Paisios Monastery out in Arizona. Um, chances are you have something from them and you might not even know it. Welcome back to Orthodox Review, the most uneducated educational program here on the internet today. I am your host, the guy with one and a half thumbs, and I'm so very, very pleased to have you with me today here on this sunny, 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 sunny day that's whitewashing me and making me look like an albino, but that's okay. <laughs> so as stated before, we're going to be taking a look at a few of the things that you may have come across from St. Paisio's Monastery out in Arizona. Now, uh, Nothing, nothing new under the sun here when it comes to information. You can get all this information from the website, but they are a monastery of nuns under um, uh, the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia. They were the first monastery or parish or anything in uh, North America to be uh, dedicated to St. Paisios village, village of Akoski. Village of Akoski. You know who I'm talking about. You know, after all that time at the monastery, having to say his name over and over again, you'd think my tongue would not get tied with that anymore. At any rate, for those of you that are not uh, familiar with St. Paisios, he was a great translator of services. He brought us the Philokalia. Great. So uh, the monastery of St. Paisios uh, produces two things, uh, primarily. Uh, the first one being prayer ropes, like this one. Chances are... Um, if you've got a prayer rope that looks like this or this, a good deal of my prayer ropes come from this monastery. In fact, let's go top down and I'll show you some prayer ropes and then we'll go over some of their publications. So as you can see here, we have a jumbled pile of prayer ropes. Each one of these prayer ropes came from St. Paisio's monastery. And there's a story behind all of them, as there usually is with prayer ropes. Now, first of all, one thing a lot of people don't know is that uh, several Orthodox outlets, um, bookstores, and parishes also get their prayer ropes from St. Paisios Monastery uh, for resale, uh, including Hermitage of the Holy Cross, which is where this one came from. And this one, uh, a well-worn, well, well-worn well prayer rope. I don't know if you can see how well-worn it is, because autofocus isn't a thing with this camera. but. Uh, yeah, I beat the living daylights out of it. And then, uh, in a fit of wanting something pretty, I got this one. And this one is the Constantinople. It's one of their specialty prayer ropes. And then recently, I decided to get back to simplicity. And so I ordered a 33 knot rope to keep with me. And a new 100 knot rope in the Greek style uh, for praying at home. Uh, so they have a myriad, a myriad of prayer rope options, which we're going to show you in a bit. In fact, we're going to do that right now. They do so many different styles of prayer ropes. We have satin, wool, wood, semi-precious stones, Panagia's pearls, Schwarzky pearls, Panagia's tears, keepsake prayer ropes, and specialty prayer ropes. Now, they used to offer numerous different colors in the wool prayer ropes, but now they just stick with the simple black. But you can get up to 300 knots if you're that kind of crazy. Now, it used to be that certain prayer ropes were only available in two or three or four ply, depending on the specialty rope. Uh, the previous version of the Constantinople rope I had was four ply, very uncomfortable, gave it to a monk. Um, the Pilgrim's Prayer Rope, for instance, is the same as a Greek style, only with tassels. The Optina are quite beautiful. These are two-ply. 
I used to have one, and I gave it to a young man, and it was beautiful. And these are prayer ropes inspired uh, by the elders there. Uh, the Ivaron is another one of my personal favorites. Here we have the Constantinople, which I have, but the Ivaron, really quite lovely. Again, that's a two-ply prayer rope, so it's a little, little on the uh, thin side. Not necessarily a bad thing. Double four-ply. If you want the chonker, I don't think the picture does justice to double four-ply, but imagine a prayer rope where the knots are about double the size. And that's what you have there. And these nuns do fantastic work with the prayer ropes. Now let's get into the books. So, like I said before, you may or may not uh, already be using St. Paisio's Monastery books, but just to give you an idea of what they do, their focus is mostly on acathists, canons, small services like that. Um, in my collection alone, I probably have a half a dozen of these. Not many. Uh, but this one, I, I, I find very useful uh, these days. And that's the canon of prayer for those who have ended their own life, which is just, you know, you can't, you, it's, you can say it privately, but you can't pray in church. But acathists, acathists, acathists. Some of their newer publications, of course, are in, in bright and vivid color. Well, the Canons of St. Mary is probably one you've seen. But when we get down here to the older ones, I'm sure you will all, or a lot of you, will recognize these titles. Bet you didn't know that St. Paisios Monastery translated and published them. Um, if there's an acathist or a canon you're looking for, chances are they have it. And I will say over here, the commemoration books, I have both of these, I use both of these, and we are going to be carrying this uh, particular commemoration book in our uh, church bookstore uh, shortly, because um, I think it's important that people have these and use them at the Divine Liturgy. So there's that. Sip of coffee. Oh, it's delicious. What could be better than prayer ropes and coffee? So there it was, a quick look at the unsung heroes of Orthodoxy in North America supplying you, your loved ones, and our clergy, and all of us, with not only the finest prayer ropes found on the continent, but some of the greatest and most important service books that you may ever find, whether it be a canon, an acathist, something supplicatory. Chances are they translated and are publishing it. And they're dirt cheap, like five bucks a pop. Go on, get some. Links below, of course, and on behalf of Spooky Cat, her mom, and myself, thank you so much for your continued support. It means the world to me. We're, we're having a great time here. <laughs> uh, may God bless us all. And please, please, please don't forget to go to church, say your prayers, and remember God. God bless. Village of Akoski. Village of Akoski. Village of...